Hey, what's up everyone? So many of you know, I post my list of fish that we always have available to our Facebook page. And recently we posted one just uh, this morning and everything is pretty much rehomed, including the guinea pigs. So yes, even the adorable little rodents have found a home. Uh, Olivia and Seth are coming to pick them up uh, tomorrow, actually. You guys will be seeing this video, and it will be tomorrow they'll be picked up. These guys are so freaking loud. I open up the fish room, and you hear them all over here, you know, uh, squeaking. It's kind of cool, but they have found a great home. But I'm just here to give you guys a little bit of update on a few fish you guys always ask. And I don't always put all the fish and all, all the videos and whatnot. The archer fish, as you, you can see, they are still doing great in this 1800 gallon Bellagio community tank. We've got the flag tails, they're actually both up at the top of the water, drinking uh, or getting some air along with the kissing grommies. They are a type of labyrinth breather. Look at that. Chimberkey or the Finbar Silver Dollar. Absolutely love them with all the, I call them thread fins. They're just absolutely stunning and beautiful. He is one of my favorite Silver Dollars to date. Just breathtaking when you look, look at them. But everyone seems to be doing well in this 1800. No complaints here. The Mad Barbs, Cigar Barbs are all doing great. I think there's seven of them now. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yes, there are seven of them. There used to be six. We recently picked one up in uh, Chicago while we were at Aquashella. That is one of the big, the bigger guys. The bigger ones are around 18 inch or so. So you, you can see some of the size of these community fish that just get absolutely massive that you don't know. Like ballast sharks. They do get pretty big. All right. So uh, over here, you guys are always asking about the Dorado. The Dorado are do doing great. Um, we are going to move them to probably the 580 soon. They are big enough to hold their own. They're eating on prepared foods. I'm probably going to put the sterlet sturgeon in with the babies. So over here, we've got the baby fish. As you guys can see, uh, we've got the high fin sharks. They're do doing great. The uh, albino pangaceus larnaudi, they're supposed to be. I'm not sure if that's what they truly are, so they're going to have to grow up just a tad bit more for me to get a true uh, definitive answer on what they are because I'm not sure if that's what they're, they're you know, claimed to be. But they are cool nonetheless. They eat like little tanks. And one guy I'm super surprised with is this uh, African arrow. He eats like a monster. So he's going to fit right in here and he's going to start growing relatively quick. Um, over here, we have the Abonite. This guy loves to sit over here behind the, the hose. He's just a wee guy still. He's probably about a foot long, maybe 13 inch. But he's got this 110 all to, to do himself. You guys always ask about the wolf fish, but he is down here. He's still doing great. Of course, I told you guys he's got much of an attitude. So it is starting to be a joy to keep him. But you do have to watch your fingers when you come in the tank. Because this guy at, you know, say 18 inch is no fish to mess with. That's for sure. All right, we're over here in this 750, and one guy I've noticed on a massive growth spurt lately is this Xanthic Clown Knife. He's probably closing in on 22 inches or so, but he is just a beefy, girthy knife fish. He's been eating like a tank. You know, I use that word a lot, but he is a beautiful fish, and he is getting some massive proportions. I love seeing clown knives get, get this big, and I'm glad this is one that we've grown out. We've probably had him since he was like 12 inches long. Now he's about 22. So glad to see our boys putting on some mass. 
There goes that tropical gar. Looking fantastic. But we've got our boys over here. They are sleeping on the uh, heat pad back there in the corner. But we've got Littlefoot and Chomper. They're still do they're doing good. Um, so that's about as much as I can say. You can see that Littlefoot, you can hardly even tell he came in with any shell pro problems. And Chomper's over there is starting to uh, look the same way. He's filling it in nice. The tortoises are doing great. Look at him. He's like, Dad, you got some food? <laughs> so as you guys can see, this uh, sand is mixed with all sorts of hay and what whatnot to get them a mix of soil. So any of the hay that they don't eat actually goes into the soil. But they are doing great. Next year is a 100% must. We have to finish their outside habitat. Look at them. Super cool. All right, up here, a little update on this guy. This is the electric catfish. This is kind of a waste of a tank just for the electric catfish. I actually might uh, get rid of this guy. I'm not sh sure yet, but he's probably grown about an inch since we've had him. A cool fish, but he really doesn't do anything. He just sits there all day, every day. All right, so you guys remember my dad moved uh, Chip and this Bicher into the old Lavaca tank. So what I'm going to try, Chip actually seems to get along with a bunch of fish. I want this Bicher in the tank with all the rest of the, the Bichers, because why have multiple tanks for the same fish? But we're actually wanting to try Chip in the 1,000 gallon. We've had good, good luck with having uh, uh, flower horns in with a, an array of fish. Actually, in particular, I can take you out here and show you. We have our other flower horn. Actually, he's uh, having a bit, bit of a scuffle with the red uh, Motag. But here goes this flower horn, which I absolutely love this guy. He is killer. Um, he's in here with all sorts of plecos, the red Motag, and the uh, albino Chinese wells. And they seem to be getting along just fine besides the uh, little bit of lip locking with the red Motag. But the red Motag is another one of those fish I'm probably going to get rid of because I did say I was going to thin out some of the herd. So, you know, that might include fish like inside the uh, 4,000. There is this Midas Cichlid. I might end up getting rid, rid of him. I'm not sure yet. This is something for the future and I got to go through and really pick through my stock and figure out what I want to go ahead and rehome. Because I mean, I don't have to, it's just that I want to. I, I want, want to try and clear out some space and get, give these fish some, some more room and make things a little bit easier on ourselves. But I do love that that eel sits up inside this log. It's actually like a a big cup. There's a inlet on this side and inlet on that side. So he's under water up there, but he is on top of the log, as you can see right there. Super neat feature, but I thought that log would be sinking by now. I was gonna flip with it over, so the fish had a cave to hide in, and uh, I replaced it with this wood in the 600 over here, but it didn't work as I hoped, but this gave some room to the stingrays as well, which uh, I just cleaned out this tank a little bit, and now these rays are now on super growth spurts. I'm actually ready to almost put these in the breeding pond over there and just let them continue to grow. So I'll only have one, two, three rays, and then four with the baby that I'm growing out but these Arapaima are putting on some freaking size. These guys eat like none other. Oh my God, that guy right, right there, he can eat, let me tell you. See that bulge in, in his stomach? I just got done feeding him. I know you guys are probably uh, tired. Actually, you guys are never tired of me feeding fish. I put a bunch on Instagram and Facebook of feeding the Arapaima. And this are modest. 
He eats just as much as those arapaima. It's absolutely nuts. This guy is just going to explode in size, and I cannot wait for it. It is going to be freaking awesome. All right, so many of you guys noticed my little cichlid colony going on here in the 4400, and it's just starting to explode. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven right there. There is eight over here. There's probably a few more hiding back in the rocks. There goes nine small little guys, some big, big guys, and they are ballsy. They're coming out in the middle of the tank. Those are mbunas and peacocks. It is absolutely crazy to see how many fish come through the filtration system and just get cycled through the tank. They now found a colony in these rocks and they're gonna start breeding. And uh, what, what am I gonna do? Drain the tank and take them out of there? Absolutely not. I'm gonna let these guys live their best life. This is, you know, Darwinism at its finest. Survival of the fittest. We create, you know, natural e ecosystems and nature will always find a way. You know, our monster pond exploded. Now our, our 4400 exploded. The cichlid tank is, uh, you know, thriving. So that is pretty freaking sweet if you, you ask me. If you build the tank, the fish will come, you know, and a uh, bunch of people's mo monster ponds or big ponds, they usually have colonies of guppies living with these monster fish. Well, we have colonies of African cichlids. And I know some of you guys are probably like, oh my God, I go to the pet store and I pay, you know, 20, 40, 50 bucks for some of these things. And you just got them living in your, your tank and they're, you know, just, you know, fish to, to you. Well, that might be true. Some of the smaller ones, uh, less common, are probably, you know, seven, eight, nine, ten bucks. But it is just cool to see. And I absolutely love it. So I hope you guys enjoyed the little update video. I will catch you in the next one. As always, stay fishy, my friends.